Welcome back to your live continuing coverage of CES 2018 right here on Be Terrific. This is your, uh, we're an official media partner. This is your live continuing coverage on Be Terrific. And we're here high atop Central Hall on the balcony here. We love it. It's unbelievable. And I'm joined by Danielle from the CTA. This is your second time on Be Terrific. Welcome back. That's right. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. At Be Terrific TV on all social media. I love that we just had dipping on from Kef. We So we've now gotten to the suites of the Venetian. We've gotten to the Sands Eureka Park. We didn't make it to the area for C-Suite because that's not really anything we would visually show. We've made it to the Westgate Suites. Uh, and we've been here at every single hall. Uh, we've also done Tech West. We've done CES Unveiled. I don't think there's any other place we could go that we haven't been. Um, we Oh, yeah, we've been everywhere that we could possibly be, I think. We just have to do more of it. You've been busy. Yes. Good oh, and job. <laughs> you heard about the, uh, the, the, the almost wedding that we streamed last night. Yes. Yeah, well, the yes. wedding happened. We just didn't stream the whole thing. Okay. But apparently, you kind of said this off camera, it's becoming legendary, I guess. Yeah. Word, the word is spreading that you caught the proposal. I don't know the full story. Well, okay, so <laughs> we had uh, Richard Higgins uh, from the Cleveland Browns on to do some interviewing okay. um, and, and, and capture his first experience on uh, at CES. So we brought him in from the Cleveland Browns with his trainer, David Robinson, and we kind of did some IRL streaming. We're doing a lot of Twitch, and IRL is in real life. Yeah. It's a new trend. It's, it's really, I would call it behind the scenes, but they would call it... Um, you know, uh, IRL in real life, real reality, yeah, unscripted reality. So we ran around um, the sands with with them, doing IRL streaming, just capturing everything. It was great. We've been doing a lot. We did CES Unveiled in IRL stream on Twitch. Great viewership. So awesome. then we did uh, this yesterday during the show. We broke for an hour, basically just to do IRL streaming with those guys at the sands. So we did. A, uh, nobody has ever, as far as I can tell, done a CES after hours show and I've always wanted to yeah. I have an idea for it but I thought this could be a good way to start it and so we did a CES after hours show uh, and the after hours show was following these guys to Top Golf, where they use a lot of technology yeah. and hanging out with them and so we were hanging out with them and as we're walking into Top Golf, David Robinson says oh I gotta find my fiance at the he goes where's the bar at and I'm like don't worry I'll get drinks delivered to the table he goes no I got I gotta find the bar and I said why my fiance is here I said oh okay great uh, well, how do, uh, he's like, I, I want to bring her in. I said, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, well, we'll find her in a second. He goes, we're getting married tonight. I said, what? He goes, y we're getting married tonight. I said, we're streaming it. He said, you are? I said, yes. And he goes, yes. So we started the whole process. We started to produce the whole wedding. They didn't know where they were going to get married or anything. Uh, we went into full mode, and, and uh, the entire Twitch audience watched the whole thing behind the wow. scenes. And we produced the whole thing. And then up. at the very last second, as we're pulling up to the chapel, the little white wedding chapel here in mm -hmm. Vegas, he called and he said, you know, she'd really rather just it be a private ceremony. Yeah. And we had 54,000 people watching, and I had to let them down softly, gently. Yeah. yeah. I hope they understood, but that is a crazy story. I, they understood. They actually said I handled it very nicely. Good. I was a mildly pushy, like, are you sure? Are you sure? This is your chance to get a free wedding video out of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're not going to have any other way to capture this. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. These memories. <laughs> anyway, uh, but that's the amazing use of technology. We use uh, cellular bonding packs from LiveView to be able to do that, uh -huh. and and that's how we were also able to stay on the air the entire time here. We're actually we have no yeah. control room this year. Our control room is back in New Jersey at Mission Control okay. in our facility. We send each camera back individually, and then wow. it gets synced up and uh, synced and switched and spit back out by Rory. Awesome. So he had a really late night too, because on the East Coast when we finished at about 11:30. Yeah. It was like, uh, I don't know, do the math. It was 2.30 in the morning. Man, you've been keeping busy. We keep busy here. It'd be <laughs> terrific. So what are some of the trends you've noticed? So, I mean, the trends, my favorite area is the digital health area, which you can find in the sands. Um, I'm a big health nut, and, you know, I love um, the Fitbits and the, the trackers, but what we're really seeing this year is kind of um, the democratization of health devices, like medical devices you used to, like, um, go to the doctor for, you can now do at home, continuous monitoring, wearables that are flexible and like a sticker that stick on you and continuously monitor whether you're a serious athlete or um, monitoring a condition or something like that so well that and that's why we brought Richard Higgins out because we thought who better to kind of experience that than yeah. him because we needed somebody well we felt we needed somebody who was maybe in better shape than me even that, though I understand it 
uh, maybe in better shape than me. So we brought him out to he did the black box thing and worked out, and that yeah. was super cool. Um, I think that uh, the thing for me is uh, um, that I love that all this technology is happening. We're starting to understand it better, and I love also that we now have apps where we can talk to doctors kind of on demand yeah. and then use these tools to give them the information they need to make diagnosis. So we're kind of like uh, being our own physician's assistants. That's right. It's that's exactly it, where we have the ability to do these things, and now we're getting data back from it, and now the kind of the next phase is sharing that with your doctors, getting personalized data that helps you change your behaviors and your, um, your outcomes, and then the next part after that is reimbursements and things uh, like that, so people are motivated to integrate technology into their health practices. Yeah, and it's very interesting how you have to go down that road with the insurance companies and stuff. Uh, what, what things are you most into when you, when you talk about fitness? Do you row? Are you into circuit training? Do you just do uh, uh, yoga? Are you uh, a runner? What's your deal? I like to do yoga and run. Um, I saw the Peloton treadmill. They introduced their treadmill. Wow. Which is amazing. Um, the, the live classes with world-renowned um, instructors that keep it fun and interesting, and it's just a beautiful piece. Yeah, very, very cool. Yeah. Um, and I love their bicycle. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What about uh, in the future? Do you think we'll see um, these kinds of uh, advances in the way we eat, uh, we grow and eat food, we create? We're gonna Because I, I, I think we're going to be creating a lot more of our own food. Yeah, I could, you know, we think of health as eating better and um, working out more and technology is now starting, I've seen um, sensors and artificial intelligence able to like scan your meal, give you back calorie information, read back um, and able to store that information so you can analyze it over time and see where um, you know, there are fluctuations, there are uh, genetic testing kits that are able um, with your gene testing tell you what allergies you might have and like what you might be predispositioned to to make better eating decisions. So I certainly see, and then actual tech to help grow food and of that sort. Yeah, too. it's very interesting. We were talking earlier with a company um, called Grobo. They're, uh, they're making a water cooler sized device that's going to help you grow your own marijuana. And they started with uh, the idea of growing your own food and they want to get back to that eventually. And so the idea that they thought was that they could uh, hydroponically grow food right. in the house and then maybe eventually make uh, a device that's as big as the refrigerator or maybe a little bit bigger that could grow food and multiple different types of food. And we've seen some people who are growing food in uh, shipping containers. So you could drop a shipping container in your backyard and literally have a farm because right. you can stack it pretty high. So not like a huge farm, but a pretty decent sized farm and then have uh, farm to table food in your own backyard. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, I think the technology will allow us to grow uh, different kinds of things like maybe uh, uh, the things that Beyond Meat does or Impossible Foods does or uh, Tempe or something like mm -hmm. that. I think it's going to get interesting how we do that. Um, and, and how that happens. I don't know much about hydroponics or growing anything, uh, let alone marijuana, but uh, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, and I, I would have to imagine there are implications for kind of third world countries or places that can't grow certain types of food with certain nutrients or something right. like that. No, it's very, very interesting and very important, especially for the world. And that's why I see this technology. Look, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett have invested uh, millions, maybe even billions at this point, uh, into these companies that are able to grow food and also yeah. create, um, I'll say, I don't want to say fake meat products, but certainly meatless products Substitu that, yeah. <laughs> that kind of are meat substitutes. Yeah. Uh, it's very interesting. They give you the same protein. Uh, and we see how it's affecting guys like Tom Brady to uh, make their careers longer by, yeah. by really watching their diets. Yeah. So I, I think it'll be interesting. And I think we, I also think as we're learning how sensitive we are as people and our bodies are because of all this analytics, we're also learning uh, how we're all different. And mm -hmm. so you might be able to eat mashed potatoes and be fine, and I might be able to eat them and right. get sick, or exactly. maybe uh, it puts me down a bad path. So yeah. I think that that's all very interesting, too. Yeah. It's amazing, kind of, the show has gone so big, but it's things like this where technology is moving into categories that weren't tech categories, like food or, or beauty tech. I know L'Oreal and Neutrogena are here with their... Um, 
devices. I don't know if you saw L'Oreal's wearable. It's like a, a tiny little dot that you can stick on your fingernail and it will detect UV exposure and let you know if you're getting too much sun. Wow. And so you don't get damaged. Very, very important. My yeah. grandmother had uh, multiple melanoma. Right. Uh, they, uh, they actually, very vain uh, woman, they had to cut her face from here to here to here. Wow. When, it, when she, they, she had a plastic surgeon do it, uh, they, she looked like Phantom of the Opera for a minute. Uh, but because a plastic surgeon did it, she was able to uh, recover nicely. Okay. Uh, a, a year and a half later, she was diagnosed with lung cancer. Who knows? You know, the theory might be that it spread. But certainly she, she had many uh, bouts of melanoma. I just talked to a friend of mine today who started a company with his uh, co-founder, Josh Apter, called The Padcaster. And we've seen like 200 padcasters around here all week. Uh, it's, a, it's a device that you put an iPad in and you can run around. Uh, you know, uh, shooting so you can rig it up with uh, microphones and uh -huh. lights and all sorts of stuff yeah. with lenses on it. makes shooting video and editing video on your iPad better. It's like a TV studio on an iPad. And um, John is, suffers from multiple melanomas. I just wow. talked to him this morning and he's uh, doing well, but uh, John Goldberg, one of the founders of that company. But the point is uh, you got to really be very careful about being in the sun. But again, it affects you differently than it affects exactly. me. And that's what's so interesting. Yeah. And it's out there. It's rampant. We we don't talk about this stuff enough, you know? So that's really good. I didn't see that. Um, and I know that there's a lot of beauty uh, tech now, which is really cool. We saw some the other night at CES Unveiled mm -hmm. where the mirror can, you know, you don't have to put on 800 shades of lipstick. The mirror can show you what it yeah, looks like. Yeah, which is great yeah. for, um, especially when I saw that, I thought about buying like hair color or lipsticks in the drugstore. You can't try it on. And so it's great to be able to kind of get an idea. And when you do you go to like the beauty counter, it never seems like uh, it's sanitary, even though they do everything they can to, to make it sanitary. It doesn't seem like yeah, that. Yeah, it'd be nice. <laughs> I, I, I love some of the tech uh, here, especially in South Hall. I've, I haven't spent that much time in South Hall in past years, but this year I spent some more time there. And um, I, I love the Furion, uh, the exoskeleton called mm -hmm. the Mac. That was amazing. And their trailers are unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and I just think, I don't know, to me, I don't know, maybe I say this every year, I think this is the most exciting year I've had at CES so far. Yeah. I, I think there's the most innovation I've seen so far. Yeah. Um, and it's really interesting because uh, I think it's the, the greatest year ever, and it's it's just such a great show. This is the greatest show. It ever. is. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's been it's been a great year, not without a few challenges <laughs> along the way, but the tech that people have brought, especially around that are changing people's lives and making real differences, health or otherwise, um, is really awesome to see. I feel like it's it's all kind of coming together. Yeah, and there's always challenges, and I always say I told Jeff Joseph this before. I said, uh, you know, I always liken CES to the Super Bowl. I, I say that the media department acts like the Super Bowl media department, and that's <laughs> why CES has grown so big, and that's why the Super Bowl has grown so big. Treat the media great. I say uh, there are about as many people in town for CES as for a Super Bowl. Uh, it is the biggest tech event in, globally, um, and it is the best. So it is the Super Bowl of tech, yeah. right? And now it officially is because the Super Bowl lost power and now CES <laughs> lost power. It's a rite of passage. Yeah, it's a rite yeah. of passage. Even Oreo tweeted, so that is, you know you've made it when. Right, <laughs> there you go. And for us, we were very proud. We, Because of the way we set up, we were able to stay on through the blackout, oh, good. turn into CNN, if you will, and, and give people updates on what was going on. Hopefully, awesome. maybe, uh, maybe one or two people who are here who are watching our stuff we're safer for it. I, I commended the CTA and the security guards here in the facility for doing such a great job of yeah. doing the smart thing, getting people out safely, evacuating it, not knowing what the issue was, making sure everything was safe before letting everybody back in. First of all, you don't want them in a dark convention center, number one. Number two, today it could be anything, so let's get everybody out the door. Yeah. We stayed on. We had guests still coming on, which was good, great. Good. We have the technology for batteries and cellular uh, connectivity, so we just kept going. Awesome. Um, and uh, I'm very proud of that, but yeah, we were able to do it. And again, I commended the CTA and the security here yeah. for, for doing that because it was the right move. It's a hard decision. And I actually, I said, I don't want to speculate, but in my mind, here's what I know from experience. I heard a pop and I heard a, and it sounded far off, but a, a transformer would be a loud pop, but it would be out the back or up on the roof. And to me, it sounds like a transformer. And that's what it turned out to be. Right. You know, so. Yeah, the um, rain. <laughs> yeah, so 
you know, uh, every the show must go on, and, and we talked to a lot of people down there, and everybody was happy and, and in good spirits and felt yeah. that they didn't miss a beat. They just went elsewhere for the time and yeah. and, and went on with their day, and it, it's life, and, yeah. and these things happen. And I think CES and the CTA and the security handled it beautifully. And, yeah. and so, yeah, nothing's without challenges. Yeah, yeah, it was. Without the, a doubt, because of that, it's the best year. On to, because of the fact that, I mean, there are no mishaps, right? Did anybody get injured? Were there any reported injuries? Not that I heard of. It could have been It yeah. could have been a very chaotic scene. You guys yeah. handled it perfectly. Yeah, thanks. Now, I have to ask a question. I noticed this this morning. It hit me. Security seems a lot lighter this year. But I think that security is not lighter. I think it's all happening in the background thanks to technology. And the only reason I ask is because I think it's important because this is CES that if it is because of the technology that's happening in the background, we don't necessarily tell people what we're doing because I don't believe in that. I don't think you, you, you let them know. But I think we talk about the fact that, look, we're getting more high tech. We now have pictures on our badge right. and all this stuff. So to me, maybe it's all happening a little bit more in the background, which is nice and maybe what we would like modeled you know, other places. Is that the case? Yeah, we certainly took extra security measures this year, like the, the picture on the badge and some other things behind the scenes, but you'll definitely see um, dogs walking around. Oh, and, it's definitely high security, presence. I don't mean it yeah. that way. Yeah. Uh, but I just noticed that, I, I think even they're checking badges less because they have facial recognition probably, I don't know, I'm not, I don't want to give away the whole thing, but we did notice some other things around that allow them to be less in your face but still be monitoring the situation. I, I think that's what I take away from it, and it seems like that's you're kind of saying yes. We, um, you know, I our experts handle that, yeah. but it's definitely our top priority yeah. for sure. You guys do a great job with security. It's definitely Good. very safe venue, Good, and yeah. uh, we always feel safe, and it's always uh, wonderful. So, um, what is your favorite part about CES every year? I mean, and getting... don't say the sleep on the plane home. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, it's. It takes months and months of preparation and planning and stress and tears and laughter and then we get here and we get to see it all come together and it's awesome. So it's getting here and seeing it all come together and seeing what people brought after rumors and things like that. It's, um, it's a really special experience, especially working so closely with everybody who puts on the show. You have a favorite memory from this year? Um, I would say, I mean, my best moments are, a, a, an event I'm proud of is our uh, Before Unveiled, we do a 2018 Tech Trends to Watch at CES in the Year Ahead presentation from our head of market research, Steve Koenig, and um, so I helped put that event on so that they get kind of a primer about what they're going to see um, at the show, but also 2018, um, it's backed by our CTA research, so it's cool to get a packed room for that, get everybody excited, then they're let off into Unveiled and to see what everybody has there. So that kind of, that first day really sets the tone for the rest of the week. Very exciting. Danielle, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And we love CES. We love being part of this. We're proud to be a, an official media partner and we can't wait till next year, actually tomorrow and then next year. Right. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. We got plenty thank more you. to come. So stay with us. We'll be back right after this. Don't go anywhere.